God bless and welcome again to the Deeper Dimensions broadcast here at the Cross Network Studios here in the city of Duarte, California. Please pick up the phone, tell somebody. Dr. Bridges is on the phone. Share on your Facebook. I'm going to share a word with you. And uh, once again, thank you for uh, your support. Thank you for being in tune uh, with this broadcast. I want to share something out of the book of um, Matthew, chapter number uh, 16, and in verse number uh, 13. I want to start right there. And just to give you a simple word, uh, that the Lord has shared with me concerning the people of God. Um, I want to talk about your knowledge, just tapping into the knowledge of God, into understanding who uh, God is. There are secrets that I've come to understand that when we tap into the wisdom and the knowledge and the revelation of who he is through and by the word of God, there are things that God will give us. He will bless us, things that will be handed to us when we tap into the understanding of uh, who he is, the kingdom, his perspectives, the mindset of God. In uh, Matthew chapter number 13, the scripture says, and when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say, that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And the scripture said, And Simon Peter answered, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for, key word, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And the scripture says, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is with the disciples. He was on his way to Caesarea Philippi. And so, as his disciples are with Jesus and seeing who Jesus is, you know, they've seen him do miracles. They've seen him do signs and wonders. They know of the power that he operates in. But now Jesus wants to know from his own disciples, who do men say that I am? And the Bible tells us that the disciples replied, you know, Lord, well, some say that thou art Elias. Some say that thou art Jeremiah. Some would say that thou art one of the other prophets. And now Jesus goes along and asks his own disciples, well, I've heard what you said concerning who the men say that I am, but since you're my people and you're my disciples and you are in my inner circle and I've been with you for all this time, I want to know from you, who do you say that I am? And the scripture says that Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied back to Peter is because flesh and blood, because your own mind and your own fleshly wisdom and mindset did not reveal this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, have revealed it unto you who I am. He says, I'm getting ready to now give you some keys. In other words, Peter, because you tapped into a revelation, you tapped into a perception, you tapped into an insight, you're not seeing me in the physical, but you're seeing me for who I really am in the spiritual. You're not looking at me just another mere man, you know, but you understand who I am. 
You understand that I'm just not a, a man like everyone else. I'm not just a servant like everyone else. I'm just not ordinary like everyone else. It took revelation for Peter to, uh, to understand who he was. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied back to Peter is, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father, which is in heaven, he says, your name is Peter, which is Petros in the Greek, which means a stone. Obviously, there could have been other rocks around. He says, upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church. What rock could it have been that there was a deeper communication from Jesus as referring to what I would say the rock of revelation knowledge? That upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Upon that insight, upon that perception of revelation that the Father has revealed unto Peter that I'm going to build my church upon this rock of revelation. And as I build my church upon this rock, there will be no gates in hell. The gates of hell will not prevail. There will be no powers that will come from the enemy's territory. There will be no powers that will come from hell that will prevail against my church. He said, not only that, but I'm going to give you some keys as well, Peter. I'm giving you something that you did not ask for. But because you tapped in, you tapped into a wisdom. You tapped into a revelation. You tapped into a knowledge. You tapped into a depth. You tapped into a spiritual understanding. When all others say that, hey, he's just nothing but Elias or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. It took the spiritual connection between you and God, my Father, that is in the heavens, to reveal to you that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, and as a result of that, you didn't ask for it, but I'm going to give you something that you didn't ask for. I'm giving you some keys. I'm going to give you this authority. And whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in the heavens. And whatever you loose on the earth, it will be loosed in the heavens. Simply, Peter, because you tapped into a revelation. Oh, God, that's so powerful. Because it lets us know that as believers, you just cannot go to church. You just don't want to be an ordinary Christian just to read your Bible and go to church every now and then just to say, I go to church. But at the end of the day, what you want to be is you want to be someone that can tap into the pure source of God through wisdom, knowledge, understanding. For God can reveal to us by the way of the Spirit for the natural man can never understand the things of God, for they must be spiritually discerned. We need spiritual revelation. Our eyes need to be open so that we can have spiritual perception. I've come to find out and understand that when you tap into revelation, God will give you things that you didn't even ask for. Peter never asked for keys. But because he tapped in, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my father, which is in heaven, have revealed to you who I am. I'm going to give you some keys. Not only will I give you keys, but also I'm making a prophetic declaration that upon this rock, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There will be no powers because why? You will understand some secrets. You will understand things and mysteries that others will not understand. It reminds me of when Jesus was telling us parables in Matthew chapter number 13 about the seed that goes out to sow upon different classes of grounds or hearers is what I would call them. 
the thorny ground, the stony ground, the wayside, then the good ground, as he was given the parable about a man that was planting seed, and as he was sowing seed, what had begun to happen. And in that text, the scripture says that the disciples asked Jesus, why do you speak to us in parables? Why do you speak to us in parables? Jesus replied back to them is, because it is not given to them that are outside the kingdom to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But because you are my people, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Seeing that these other people that are outside of the kingdom, their hearts are wax gross. They're in total darkness. But lest they seeing they may see, and lest understanding that they may come into an understanding, Less hearing they may come into unhearing. Their eyes is now open. Their understanding is now open. That now they should be converted. Jesus said that I now may have to forgive them of their sins. And that I should heal them. See I've learned in my studies of the scriptures. There are a lot of things that God will not offer. And things you need to tap into. You need to tap into the depths. Of the spirit you need to tap into the revelation knowledge of the Word of God so that the Holy Ghost can reveal to you the secret things the secret mysteries so that understandings can come open that eyes would be open ears would be unstopped how can the blind leave the blind lest we both fall into the ditch our Eyes spiritually need to be open to understand who he is, to understand the revelation. So now he speaks in parables so that them that are outside the kingdom would never understand. It's sort of like giving pearls to swine. You got to be a part of this inheritance. You got to be a part of this kingdom to tap into the dimensions of the word of God to understand the secret things. Once again, when we would understand, Peter didn't ask for anything, but because he tapped in, he tapped into a revelation. He tapped into a knowledge. He tapped into a sight. Scripture says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. We cannot understand the word of God in our fleshly mindset. We can't understand the word of God in our own wisdom and our own knowledge, and in our own understanding, the Holy Ghost must reveal the Word of God to us, to enlighten us. Oh, God. He must reveal the Scriptures to us so that we would have His understanding, we would have His wisdom, and we would have His knowledge so that we would understand his plan, his purpose, the secret things of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. How many of you know in the book of Proverbs, the Bible talks about how a king hides a matter. But it is an honor of people like you and I to search out, to seek the kingdom, to seek ye first the kingdom so that we would come into a wisdom and a revelation and a knowledge and as we would tap in things will begin to be added unto us Matthew 6 33 talks about seek ye first the kingdom how am I seeking the kingdom I'm seeking the kingdom by way of understanding by studying the scriptures study the show thyself approve a workman that needed not but yet rightly dividing the word of truth I'm tapping into depths and going into deeper understandings of the Word of God to tap in as Peter did I like Peter because Peter always want to know more many of us that know the story about washing the feet when Jesus gathered himself and long girded himself with the towel and began to wash the disciples feet it was the same Peter that asked the question Lord why do you wash our feet see in order to go into the depths of God you got to have a hunger somewhere. 
You got to know within your spirit that God is calling you deeper. You got to know in your spirit that there's more than that what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. There's more, got to be more than, than just me going to church on a Sunday and hearing the preacher preach. You got to know for yourself in your personal relationship that there has to be more than this. I need God to take me from the shallow and take me into the depths of the word of God. That's why when we study the scriptures, the enemy don't want you to study the scriptures. So he makes you become very sleepy. Why? Because he know if you tap in, it's just like going fishing. You go into the deep and you begin to tap in. He know that there were jewels that are in the deep, that are not in the shallow, but they're in the deep. We got to tap in. We got to spend some time and tap into what I always say, the third dimensions of the scripture. For in that third dimension, there's always life. Always life. Peter tapped in. The Lord gives him keys. It reminds me of another story in the Old Testament uh, in, uh, I think it was 2 Kings, around about the 4th chapter, verse number 10. Elisha is on his way, passing through the way of Shunem, on his way to Shunem. The scripture says that as he was passing by a particular way, here is a woman that sees the prophet. She invites him in to break bread with him. The Bible says that all of a sudden what she does now is she tells her husband, hey, I perceive, I perceive, see, spiritual perception. I don't just see a man. I see somebody who is of God. I perceive that this is a holy man of God. She says to her spouse, why don't we just go ahead and build him a chamber so that as basically as often as he would travel through the way, on his way to Shunem and back and forth, perhaps he can turn in into our home and go into the chambers and he could rest. What did she do? She saw something, not in the physical, but she saw something in depth. She saw something with a spiritual eye and it was her spiritual perception that caused her to have a revelation of who he was. She perceived that this was a true man of God a holy man of God. This woman was barren. She did not ask for a child. But because of her spiritual perception, when she tapped in and she saw who he was, built the chamber in her home. The Bible said now that the prophet sent the servant to ask her, what do she need? The woman didn't have no child. All of a sudden, the prophet realized she don't have a son. He prophesied to her and spoke that a son she would have. Why? Because she tapped into something. She tapped into a part of God. She, see, that's real worship. She, she tapped into something that was beyond flesh. She tapped into something that was beyond her Natural eyesight tapped into something that was spiritual. Because she did that, she worshiped. She magnified the God that was in his life. So it caused her to now build a chamber in her own home. When the prophet recognized what she did, he spoke a child in her life. She didn't ask for a child, but God blessed her with one because of what she tapped into. See, when you understand the secrets of the kingdom, it's like hidden jewels all over the place. You got to seek and you got to find. And when you find it, that, heritage, that inheritance belongs to you. Peter didn't ask for the keys, but he tapped into a wisdom, tapped into a revelation. And Jesus says, listen, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, he says, but by my Father which is in heaven. I'm going to give you, Peter, keys. And whatever you bind, whatever you lock, whatever you bind, that's what keys are for, is the authority to lock and unlock. 
to bind and to loose. Whatever you do in the earth, it will be done in the heavens. What an honor. What an honor. All because he tapped in. Same like with Rahab. She hid the, the spies in her home. And at the end of the day, who knew that as a prostitute, she would be in the lineage of Jesus? She tapped in. See, when you tap into a depth and when you tap into a revelation, when you tap into the knowledge of the Spirit of God and the understanding of God, God will give you things that you don't even have to ask for. He speaks to them in parables according to Matthew chapter 13. Because for them that are outside has not given them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But yet he speaks, but yet when he gets to his disciples, he reveals. He reveals. He reveals. He opens up understandings. See, the word of God is always three-dimensional. It's past, present, and it's future. We need to not know what God is saying. We need to, what, what, well, let me back that up. We don't need to know what he's saying. We want to know what is he saying for this present time that we're in right now. What is he saying concerning your personal life? What is he saying right now concerning your personal situation? If you tap into a revelation, and get an understanding of the word of God and tap into the depth, you'll be surprised at some of the things that God will put in your hands. Peter didn't ask. He tapped in. He tapped in. He tapped in. He tapped in. I like Peter. Same story. Jesus is walking on the water. It is the same Peter that asked him, Lord, why do you wash our feet? It is the same Peter that asks, answers the question, Thou art the Son of God, the Christ, the Son of God. It is the same Peter that when the disciples are on the boat, on the sea, Jesus is walking the water. It is something that is on the inside of Peter that says there's got to be more than this. I'm in the boat with all the other disciples. Jesus is walking the water. He looks out and sees Jesus and recognizes if Jesus could do it, maybe I can do it. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. I'm not trying to be ordinary like everybody else. I don't want to be in the same boat like everybody else. I want to tap into something that most people are not tapping into. I want to tap into a death. I want to tap into who you really are. Jesus says, Peter, come. Peter steps out the boat and begins to walk on water. He begins to do something that defies all scientific logic and reasons. He begins to experience miracles. Walking on the water is something that is in him that's saying that there is something deeper. I'm ministering to somebody because there's somebody that's watching me. You know that there is something in your spirit that is saying that I need to go deeper. There are some depths I need to tap into. There has to be more to this than what we've been experiencing. There's got to be more to God than what we see with our own eyes. I want to tell you that there is. I want to tell you, tap in, tap in, tap in. The deep calleth unto the deep. Tap into the depths. Spend time in consecration and fasting and developing your ears so that the Lord can reveal to you the secrets, the mysteries of his word. Tap into the knowledge. Tap into the insight. And I guarantee you, things that you never asked God for, he'll give it to you. These are secret things of the word of God that I've discovered for my own personal life. Things that I don't ask God for. The things that he's put in my hands. Anointings that he has put upon my life. All because he 
tap into a revelation. See, there is a revelation and there is a knowledge that school would never give you. Only the spirit. Only the spirit. We got to learn to go back to the spirit and trust in the leading and the guidance of the Holy Ghost so that he would lead and guide us into all truth. The woman with the alabaster box, same situation. She had some expensive oil. His own disciples looked at her as she was breaking open the alabaster box and saying, my God, this woman could have used this to sell and become rich. But she took all what she had, break it to anoint his feet because she tapped into a revelation. And behold, that got her name and her story listed in the books for throughout all eternity. I want to tell you, tap in. Tap into the source. Tap into the revelation and watch what God would do. I pray that this broadcast was a blessing to you. If it's been a blessing, you can email me. I've received email from out of the country in England. You can email me. Send a seed. You can send it by way of Facebook. You can send it by way of PayPal. Send a seed. Help me to stay on the air. And I want to pray that God will continue to bless you, to raise you up, and to keep you and yours from this day forth. I pray that you heard something. God bless you. See you real soon.